Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna take a look at how to derive the volume of a sphere using the disk method. Now to apply the disk method, we have to start by rotating a region about the x-axis. So we need to make a connection to what region, when we rotate it about the x-axis, would that give us a sphere in three dimensions? And that region is gonna be a circular region. So our starting place, let's go back to two dimensions to the equation of a circle, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So let's start there. We'll just draw a circle in two dimensions. And we're gonna denote the radius of that circle as r. All right, now eventually we're gonna set this up as an integral with respect to x from the center to the edge. That distance is the radius, giving you here the x coordinate positive r. This distance is also the radius, but it's along the negative x-axis, so this coordinate is negative r. Eventually we're gonna have an integral set up from negative r to r, integrating with respect to x. All right, now with your equation here, of this circle, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Unfortunately, this equation by itself does not define a function because the curve here fails the vertical line test. In order to apply the disk method formula, you have to integrate a function of x. In other words, we're gonna to try to solve this equation for y as a function of x. So let's go through that, solving that equation for y. All right, first I can solve for y squared, subtract x squared from both sides. And if we wanna get y by itself, we can cancel the square here by taking a square root. And don't forget when you take a square root, you get a plus or minus, and now the square root of r squared minus x squared. All right, now we don't want both of the signs here, the positive and the negative. We're rotating a region about the x-axis, so it's gonna be enough for us to take the upper half and just rotate that about the x-axis. The upper half corresponds to the positive root. So worth stating it here, the upper portion of the unit circle, or this circle of radius r, that corresponds to the positive root. And the negative, that corresponds to the bottom portion of the circle. And that would be negative, the square root of r squared minus x squared. We're just going to use the positive root, and we're going to use that in the formula here, which is nice because that has a square root in it. The formula for the disk method has a square. Those are going to cancel out. So our integral, once we've set it up, it should look rather simple. So let's plug everything in. We get our volume here as the integral from negative r to r. Your region here that you're rotating lies between negative r and positive r on the x-axis. All right, the disk method also gives you a factor of pi. That's because your cross sections are circular, pi r squared. All right, and what we now integrate is basically the radius squared, where we're gonna be using the positive root. So we have the square root of r squared minus x squared, and we square that, and then integrate that with respect to x. All right, let's simplify this step by step. First, the square and the square root will cancel, and I can bring this factor of pi out front. So we're just gonna be left with r squared minus x squared. All right, you could integrate from here, but this is gonna be a little bit tedious when you then plug in with the fundamental theorem of calculus, your limits, negative r 
and r for x. What we can notice is we have a symmetric interval from a negative number to a positive number, and the function that we're integrating, if I call that f of x as r squared minus x squared, that is an even function. In other words, if you were to plug a negative in for x, you just get the same thing as f of x. So we have a shortcut, which hopefully you're familiar with. When you have an integral of an even function over a symmetric interval, negative a to positive a, you can integrate from zero to a, but then double that. So we're gonna make use of that, giving us a lower bound or lower limit of zero. That's gonna make it really nice to evaluate this integral. So we're gonna double the integral from zero to r, and our function stays the same. Again, here we're using this trick only because the function is an even function. So we're integrating r squared minus x squared. All right, now it's worth pausing here to emphasize a very common mistake that I find even the best calculus two students make. It's when they integrate r squared. Now make sure you realize your variable here, you're integrating with respect to x, the radius r is a constant, which means r squared is also a constant. The common mistake I find is students integrating r squared with respect to x to one third r cubed, which is wrong. r squared is a constant, so your antiderivative for your first term there, it's gonna be the constant times x, so r squared x. And now you can apply the power rule to integrating x squared. That correctly gives you one third x cubed. And now we evaluate that from x equals zero to x equals r. All right, now it's nice when you plug in x equals zero here, because that whole antiderivative is gonna evaluate to zero, and we just need to now plug in x as r, and we're about to see a very common question I get, or something that I bring up, why is there a four-thirds factor in the volume formula? That factor of four-thirds is not made up, and we're about to see where it comes from right now. So let's go ahead and plug in. Plug in x equals zero. That evaluates to zero. Only part that survives is when you plug in x equal to r. So we have our factor of two pi out front. Plug in x is r. You're gonna get r squared times r, r cubed. And then here, minus one-third r cubed. All right, and we're about to see it the moment where we see the factor of four-thirds comes from. Again, that's not made up. Here, you have r cubed minus one-third r cubed. One minus a third is two-thirds. So that part in parentheses becomes two-thirds r cubed, and you just multiply two pi to two-thirds r cubed, and you get your volume formula, four-thirds pi r cubed. And there we go, we see where the factor of four-thirds comes from. It's basically from the power rule for your antiderivatives. Basically that factor of four-thirds comes right from there. All right, and that's it. That's how we derive volume formulas for special solids here using the DISC method. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.